recording. All right, so we start the recording, and then I'm the broadcast start. is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, welcome to the uh, the PaaS uh, BI Data Warehouse Virtual Chapter. Um, of course, our virtual chapter is sponsored by Primatic Works, and we want to make sure and thank them for their support uh, of the BI Virtual Chapter. Uh, what we're going to talk about today, Peter is going to go ahead and talk about Power Map and displaying data geographically, and he'll go through a presentation um, and a lots of demos, so we'll get to that in just a minute, but before we get to that, I want to mention just a few things. Uh, first of all, the upcoming sessions that are going to uh, happen in uh, September. Here's a couple mentions of them. One of them is data-driven formatting and SSRS. It's coming up on the 17th. And then Happy as a Pig and Muck, that's coming up on uh, Friday the 20th. And those are our virtual chapter uh, presentations for the BI side that are coming up. Also wanted to mention the SQL Saturday events that are coming up. You can take a look at the screen online here and see all the different locations where SQL Saturday is going to take place. Um, it's a wonderful opportunity for folks to attend a full day of, uh, of training and such. So. Uh, also wanted to mention, uh, PASS would like us to kind of share with the other virtual chapters and online you will see a list of some of the other sessions that are coming up for some of the, uh, different, um, the different sessions that are coming up soon, including ours that's uh, happening today and a couple others that happened um, last week. The thing I want to mention is all these are recorded, and so these sessions will be available. If there's something that you see here that you would like to go back and take a look at, um, the recordings are um, stored out on the, 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 the PAS website, and you just drill into the virtual chapters. Um, Here's a mention, quick mention of all the different virtual chapters that there are. You can go out to your PASS registration and you can actually check that you want to belong to one of these virtual chapters and you'll get updates on what's going on with those. So that's something else to, uh, to take a look at. Um, as we move into uh, the PASS Summit and kind of running into that realm, they've also asked us to make sure to uh, note that if there's someone that you want to nominate it as a PASS volunteer, um, you can recommend that they be chosen as a past volunteer of the month, and they will get that recognition, get some appreciation for the work they're doing um, with PASS. And kind of as we wrap up the introduction here, just to mention the PASS Summit, of course, is coming up in Charlotte October 15th through the 18th. If you use that code, the BIVC, you will get $150 off the registration. Of course, it's a wonderful event. If you're on the East Coast of the U.S., of course, it gives you an opportunity maybe to uh, save some uh, some travel costs because it uh, with it being in Charlotte. Um, kind of the uh, other items to stay connected with PaaS, you can see there's a LinkedIn profile, of course, Facebook, Twitter, and then the SQL Pass. Uh, .org site has a blog that you can certainly use to stay in touch with what's going on uh, around the past community. So those are the couple things that are going on that I did want to mention. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and turn the presentation over to Peter, and he's going to talk um, for the, about the next uh, 40 minutes or so. If you do have questions, certainly feel free to uh, log them in the question and answer area, and we will potentially answer those as we go. We may wait till the end, um, but either way, go ahead and put those questions out there. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and turn uh, our presentation over to Peter, and um, hopefully we'll be talking again in about the next 40 minutes. Thank you very much. Um, so just a quick uh, overview of PowerMap. It's a basic mission is transforming data into fluid 3D stories, unlocking insights for everybody. So it's, it's, it's a progression of taking data from a number of data sources, pushing that into an Excel model, and then taking that Excel model and mapping it in a 3D world um, for, for both to, the ability to do some data analysis and also to tell stories. So I was going to give you a first example of just how easy it is to map uh, pieces in Power Map. What I've done is I've taken uh, from the Azure uh, data, uh, data mart, I've taken the crime statistics uh, uh, for the state of New York and have this uh, just set as a table. And then also in my Power Pivot model, I have, I have um, demographics taken from Azure um, database uh, data mark. So I have, uh, for New York, I have uh, this separated by zip code of total population, medium age, 
um, and a few other pieces. Hey, Peter, now, can, can you share your desktop for us? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you very much. I dumped you over and didn't, didn't do a good, good transition there. So where? Okay. For some odd reason, I'm not seeing the screen share. Change presenter. Up top, do you see show my screen? Yeah. Okay. There we go. And then show my screen. Okay. So let's just. Sorry, apologize for that. I didn't do a great transition. So I have a just trans. The uh, mission of Power Map is to transforming data into fluid 3D stories um, and unlocking locking the value of those stories. Um, again, it's to take data from a basic model. So what I have here is it's uh, from the Azure Data Mart. Again, it's uh, crime statistics for the state of New York, um, year 2006-2008. And then I have a Power Pivot model where I've taken um, demographics. Uh, for for the state of New York, uh, various things like population, home value, um, based off 2010 census. Now, obviously these those years don't match exactly, but the, the 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 heart of this demonstration is to show that you can take data from two different data sources, have them unrelated uh, in 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 an actual power pivot model to where you you don't have any relationship between any of the data pieces, and then map them on the same geoflow map or sorry, power map map. But. So in order to launch a power map, you click in launch power map. Uh, we're going to start with a brand new fresh tour. Now, um, what, where we have, what we have here is we have um, just a basic globe of the United States, and then we have uh, the, the task editor at right. So the way power map works is we have different layers. So the first layer um, is your, your first data source and then you can layer pop into the layer of another, another data set. So we're going to look at geographics of the state of New York at the moment, and um, we have to choose what, what we're going to map it by. Um, and our column we're going to map it by is called geograph, um, geograph, uh, geography ID, which is a synonymous with zip code. And if you notice that um, Power Map automatically says, oh, this is zip code, and, and maps that to zip code. And you can also map data by latitude and longitude, which tends to be faster from a mapping perspective, uh, by city, by county slash region, by county, um, country, um, by state, street, uh, address, and, and others. And they also link together fairly well, too. So if you want to map, like, let's say your address in a particular city, it does a fairly good job of mapping mapping that data. We hit next, and then we got to check, uh, we got to kind of select what we're going to map by. So we have, we have the, all the data points selected, saying that we have data on all these, these areas, but we don't have um, we're going to select column by. So we're going to look at, what we're going to look at is total population. So we have total population 2010, and then all of a sudden total population pops up. Now the nice thing about this is we, we're, we're more interested in not necessarily this, this bar graph, but since the data is more homogeneous, we want to look at it from a, a different data type. So you can select bubble, which is more of a more of a pie chart that grew up, that allows you to select categories and then also grow exponentially. So a heat map, which is more useful for you have different intensities of data um, flowing in different regions, and then you also have region, which is kind of which is a newer feature to Power Map, where it actually maps out the region. So if you look at all these particular zip codes, are are actually um, centered around the area, and you can do this on a state level or a, a zip code level or I think a country level too. But anything, any other sort of granularity you have in your categories is, is um, not exactly uh, uh, mapped by that, so you'll get an error. So let's close that out because we know that's total population. And if you look um, to this area, you can see higher uh, um, populations in different, in different zip codes, and it's all mapped, and it looks, looks great. Now if you wanted to um, now on top of this, we want to add another layer. So we're just going to change this to um, total population. Uh, we can change the data name to total population. Where we, we want to layer on top of total population our other data set, which is the crime stat. So we add, we choose add a new layer, um, and we look for our city crime table. Now. As you can see, we don't have a zip code field, so these aren't going to map directly, but we do have a city, and we do have a state. And as you can see, when I 
click that state out, um, even though this is all technically New York data, there there is also a, let's say for instance, a, a Young Sun Village in Canada or a Stony Village in Washington. But if I hit state, um, Power Map automatically maps uh, the city to, to New York State. Alrighty, so we have that set up, and we're going to move this over to uh, different features. So what, what we have is different numbers of incidences, crime, burglary, uh, larceny, motor vehicle theft. But since we're looking at population, we want to look at, let's look at burglary, um, burglary and then aggravated assault. As you can see, if we just select these two columns, we, we, we automatically get a, um, a, a value, and it's also segmented by these columns. So we can select categories with this. So it's really nice if you have uh, data that, that, that you have a bunch of all these categories set up in a pivot table. You can graphically put that pivot table on a map in a way that uh, is very useful for, for making decisions. And as we can see, as we, one would expect, uh, we zoom out, we see that crime is a lot higher in, in New York City as opposed to the other outlying areas. Uh, an interesting thing with, with Power Map is, is that if there's a zero remark uh, set up, sometimes there's there's this kind of whole return like we have right here. So what we do is we just say shows uh, zeros and then click that and then we're set up. So that's a